Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cheese. Since it's been a little bit since Operation 5 launched, I've had a little bit more time to mess with the classes and tried to come up with some optimal horde builds and kind of toy around with some of the new cards and everything. And I felt that I wanted to start a series off of optimal builds for some of these classes and today i want to start off with the anchor class which i personally feel is a very underrated class it has been changed and buffed into more of a big support role still can do some dps but i feel it's overshadowed because of the assault classes the damage dealers demolitions blade master infiltrator and marksman i feel that Anchor gets overlooked because of this. It's still a solid class in Escape, but I want to focus on its abilities and hordes. So, let's get into it. Now, as you know, his ultimate ability is a barrier. He deploys an invulnerable shield that moves with you. Now, this build will focus around altering that barrier, altering his shield. I'll get into all the specifics with that, but... This is his strength right here. His passive ability, anyone who fires through your barrier deals 50% damage. This was changed in Operation 5, meaning anybody who sits behind you and takes lovely uh, cover behind that shield can do additional damage. So, like I talked about those damage dealers, demolitions, marksmen, veteran, all those people that do big damage, they'll do even more behind this shield. Now, let's get into the build that I want to talk about. Big thing is, I said, you build around that barrier. The barrier is invulnerable. It moves with you. Teammates do more damage with it. So first thing I do is barrier boost, which does 150% increase barrier size. So that's over double the size of the barrier. So it gives more teammates cover. It lets teammates do additional damage to it, which is really, really, really good. want to focus on this one right here next. Barrier Battery. They changed his ultimate in, I think it was Op 4, to make it last a little bit longer because most people just kind of use it as an oh crap moment. They're about to wipe, so let me pop the barrier and sit behind it so I don't take damage. This increases the duration even more. This is at level 5. It's still not. This card's still not maxed. As you can see, it goes to 60% which gives it a lot of extra time that that barrier is active. Now, one of the big changes, the new card they put in Op 5 that Michael Shannon put in here that I really, really like is Harness en Energy. Each barrier hit gives stem to the entire team. If you're under 100% health, it gives HP. Now, as you can see, it's mine's only level 1 because I'm having a devil of a time get it to drop. Probably just going to spend coins on it for right now. But you can see that it goes up to 1 to 2 stem and probably goes all the way up to 6 stem. This can save master runs. You pop that sh you pop that barrier and in front of a guardian, in front of elite drones, in front of a mulcher, scion, anything like that, everybody's going to get stem. And this could happen, especially if it's a guard, it, like the enemies that I just talked about, like a guardian or a mulcher scion that pound, that sit there and just chew ammo, and he hits that shield, the entire team's going to be stem, and they're going to get it fast. And that that's on top of all the additional damage. But as I've said, I can personally say this can save master runs. Uh, another one that is big is Bloody Shot. If you played as Anchor or Mac, as he used to be, in Escape, you know about Bloody Shot. This was bumped up to 80% bleed damage. Every active Boltok hit he hits, he does 80% bleed damage to it. That's five ticks of 80% of that damage. This is a very essential card. This is his damage right here. This is his damage dealer. This 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 is big for Mac. Uh, this, this is invaluable in Escape, and it is his primary way of doing damage with it. This is a new card that came out in Operation 5. You have to reach level 19 to get it. This is a new go card, Bullet Chain. Each headshot kill, which if you're using the Boltok, you're going to be doing a lot of headshots. You get, mine's level 4, I think this goes up to 50% at level 6. You do 40% damage for 15 seconds, and it stacks. It will stack till you get up to 200%, and yes, this is as good as it sounds. This lets Mac do some big DPS, and then you stack with that with that bleeding damage. Mac is, yes, Mac becomes a beast. Now, this is my optimal build for Horde. 
If you want to extend your barrier, you could always use barrier feedback. This gives you at level 6 3 extra seconds of ultimate duration. You can't really use some of these Venom cards because if this is in Horde. You can do the Lethal Barrier, which is really useful for Juvies. This is usually what I ran before Operation 5. This is really good. You can give them extra health. You can give them extra Boltock damage. I used to run this, but that's the next point that I want to talk about. I feel this is the optimal build when you combine it with his perks. Now, we'll take a look at his perks. This was changed also. He has critical damage, which goes up to 50%, which is outstanding and i mean you stack this with bullet chain and all that other stuff this you're going to be doing some big damage damage resistance which he had uh you saw the adrenaline junkie card which gave uh damage resistance so now this goes up to i think it goes up to 30 percent this damage this is a universal damage card goes up to 50 percent this one's very useful considering he starts with the marksa and a retro so you can use it with that you're really going to be using it with the boltock but here's the new card they put in or the new perk they put in the game which is ammo regeneration so i talked about using his boltock for the bleed using it to stack with bullet chain Thing is, is you can't put a Boltock in a weapon locker. That's your primary way in Horde to refill all your ammo. The ammo boxes don't really give enough for as, enough ammo for as much as you're going to be firing constantly. And you can buy it from the Fabricator, but you're going to start chewing through power when you could be upgrading these perks or you're helping an engineer build the base. Ammo regen regens your Boltock consistently once i think i had this at level three or level four this goes up 10 percent goes all the way up to 100 percent you will constantly have bull talk you have to probably sweat through the first couple of waves till you get some get some uh, energy into it and get this leveled up but mac will constantly have bull talk ammo and then it isn't and to make it clear that isn't just for bull talk this is for his retro this is for the marks this is for any gun that you pick up Minus the heavy weapon. So, this is really, really big here. And, let me close out of this real quick. So, as you see, he starts with a retro and a marks, as I talked about, and the bolt talk. I love my lovely little skins here. So, these are really good weapons. Now, the marks is really good with bullet chain as well. As I said, each headshot kill does the additional damage you can use with it. You're using that, using a critical damage perk, using the overall damage perk, you're going to be doing a lot of DPS. And, as I said, Mac... Anchor is a very underrated character in terms of support and DPS. He can do DPS. He's overlooked because most people want to do an insane amount of damage. They want to burn through the enemies. They want to speed run through matches. Anchor is a very reliable class now. And I feel Michael Shannon really pushed that in this update. And I feel I've seen it in this. So this is the build that I believe you should go for. If you guys have any comments questions or anything like that feel free to reach out to me on twitter or comment on the video tell me your optimal bills tell me what you like to do i'm having a blast playing horde and op 5 hope you are too and look out for some more videos coming soon that'll do it for today talk to you guys later